Uh, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so grateful to do this. I'm so excited we can leave our houses again. Uh, I'll tell you, if there's one thing I did not miss during the pandemic, it was spending money going to other people's weddings. Uh, I didn't miss it. I think I saved $10,000 last year. I think that's what I did. I'm not even against weddings. I love weddings. I'm Irish Catholic, so usually a wedding just means getting all of my uncles into one place, and I get to watch them wrestle uh, with, with their alcoholism, like it's a sexuality. There's just so much pressure. I remember I was, I was dating a girl for four years. We went to a family wedding. Whenever you've been with anyone for that long and you go to a family wedding, there's always one aunt. She will find you. <laughs> and she'll be like, when are you two tying the knot? And you go, take a lap, Aunt Susan. <laughs> you smell like box wine. <laughs> They're not serving that here. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not against marriage. I've never been against it. I've just always wanted to be the best version of myself going into that chapter of my life. So when my aunt brought it up, it just sent me into this very real panic attack, and I found myself alone at a reception table, breathing way too hard. And, and, and my girlfriend found me, because uh, that, that's what they do. And, uh, <laughs> and she was like, hey, guy, um, I can tell something's bothering you. And I feel like maybe we should talk about it. Like, maybe I should know what that thing is. Uh-huh, 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 okay. Um, well, I guess what you should know is the way I picture the inside of your head is just an empty shelf with a kitchen timer on it that says marriage. And that thing is just tick. <laughs> Sidebar, just so we're all on the same page, I know it's 2021, okay? It doesn't have to be a kitchen timer, just the way I see it. Okay? She's the hardest working woman I've ever met in my entire life. Started her own company, has 40 employees. She's an entrepreneur, 30 years old. I tell dick jokes for money sometimes. <laughs> Doesn't have to be a kitchen timer. Just the way I see it. I just, I just know we are getting so close to that marriage timer. I'm not against it. I just know once that one goes off, all the other timers are going to start taking to be house, mortgage, kids, schools, minivans, sporting events, birthday parties, all these timers. Just trying to win them back, 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 trying to win them back. Finally, she grabs me. She goes, you need to calm down. There's no timers. That's not how the female brain works. We're just alone at this wedding. It feels like the first time in months I've been able to catch my breath. I'm just looking at her like. She goes, it's more of a fuse. <laughs> So I asked her to marry me, and she said yes. I'm pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you. We just, uh, we just celebrated our first wedding anniversary in quarantine. Uh, I loved it. I loved getting married. I, I loved her dress. I loved the open bar. I loved, uh, <laughs> I loved learning that my wife dances like she has a past that I don't know about. <laughs> Like, babe, I never knew you could dance. I've never thought you could dance like that. Your, your fingernails aren't bedazzled, and I care about you. <laughs> now we're trying for kids. It's a crazy thing. We're trying for kids. It's so much work. It's, it's the first time in my entire life that I felt like a utility. <laughs> this, this must be what our honeymoon felt like for her. Like, like, for me, we went to Bali. For my wife, she went to a haunted house of what corner is my husband naked and, like, kind of hard behind? <laughs> Just us in a pool villa, I'm just like, how about now? <laughs> now, now we're trying, I, I, wish, I wish we were still on a tropical beach. I wish we were still in a location to make sense of the amount of sex that we're having. Now it's just like, you just want me to have sex in Burbank and what, think about how good the schools are? I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> we're trying to keep it interesting. You know, we're, we're trying Kama Sutra right now, um, which is great if, if you wanna make sex feel like putting Ikea furniture together. <laughs> I'm just trying to build a family with my wife. Instead, we're just in this office like, no, the book says that piece should be in there. <laughs> trying to be a dad. I hope we have a girl. I want a girl for the cookies. I, uh, <laughs> anyway, if we're being honest, Girl Scouts have the best cookies, okay? They raise $800 million a year for charity. They have a cookie called the Samoa that's so good it doesn't offend the Samoans. <laughs> And not to make friends or enemies out of anyone here, but Boy Scouts sell popcorn. They sell popcorn for like $26 a bag. Girl Scouts sell cookies for like $5 a box. So besides proving that a wage gap exists, I'm not sure what they're doing with the popcorn. <laughs> it's a weird thing. I'm starting to like try and look at myself and own every part of myself and be honest with who I am inside and out, just thinking about bringing a kid into this world. 
I think we were all just given this tremendous gift this last year. We all just had like a chance that we could reflect on ourselves, how we can be better, look at ourselves as a country, how we can be better. I looked inward. Not great. <laughs> Mostly corn syrup. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, I, uh, I looked inward and uh, if I'm being honest with all of you, I found that I do have prejudicial behaviors. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not proud of it. I'm, I'm definitely working on it. But I, I know that I do judge people by the way that they look. <laughs> like I, I was friends with a lot of them growing up. I, um, I should say, like, I don't care what color your skin is, where you're from, who you pray to, or who you are in love with, but if you're hot, I hate you. <laughs> If you're gorgeous, you're... And some of you might be, but Hunter, you're attractive. Those people are from Ohio. Nobody needs to think like that. I am Old Navy Handsome in a town of Lululemon. I don't know why I live in Los Angeles. I can't even shop at normal stores. For, for a wedding, I went and I bought a new suit at a big and tall store, uh, which I was hesitant to do, mostly because I don't think of myself as fat. I, I think I would classify myself as uh, playfully obese. Um, <laughs> lava lamp-esque. <laughs> But I went, I went to Big and Tall, and I walked in, and it felt so good. <laughs> First of all, so much air conditioning. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, they know exactly how much I sweat from the car to the front door. I walked in, all the mannequins were bigger than I am, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> I think I feel pretty. <laughs> Usually I'm just ashamed in a dressing room, throwing a bunch of clothes that don't fit into a dirty little corner, because I'm a monster. This place, I'm throwing shirts over the door. Just, Philip, do we have anything smaller? All of this is too big. <laughs> my whole life, my whole life, I thought it was a triple XL. Turns out I've been a fat small the whole time. <laughs> and I don't. I don't think of myself as fat. I, 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 unless I'm at a theme park. If, I, if, I, if I'm at a theme park, life reminds me quite frequently how fat <laughs> Last time I was there, I, I went to a roller coaster with my friends. We all, we all went to get on. All my friends got on. They went click, 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 click. I got on. I went click, click. <laughs> this will be good. All of a sudden, the kid running the ride, he just goes, I'm sorry, sir. We're going to need two more clicks from you. <laughs> click, click. Sir, you're just saying that with your mouth. <laughs> Now we're just having this staring contest because uh, two more clicks or two more clicks, two more clicks. Finally, the guy just goes, shut it down! <laughs> Whole ride comes to a stop. All the emergency lights turn on. We're in line for an hour and a half. Everyone's just looking around like, is the ride broken? I'm just looking down like, no. I am. And I got kicked off the ride for being too fat. Oh, no, no, no. I am from Los Angeles. Nobody who f lives here feels that way. Where are you guys from? <laughs> you guys feel things? You guys don't have to feel bad. Uh, you cut to me. I'm at the food court. I'm drinking all the domestic beer. I'm eating all of the hot... I'm at a table for one just like, why does this always happen to me? Because here's the thing. I'm fat, but I'm not... Shut it down! Fat. Like, I should be able to fit. <laughs> but that's life. That's ups and downs. I'm trying to get, like, get used to that idea of trying to become a parent. You know, I'm not always going to be in control. Sometimes it's going to be unfair. Don't always know what's going to happen. One morning, I was, uh, it's true, I was brushing my teeth one morning. I, I went to spit out my toothpaste. And physically, I couldn't. I looked up in the mirror, and I realized that this left side of my face was completely paralyzed. I, I thought I was having a stroke. I, I went to my wife. She started hysterically crying immediately. She's like, we need to go to the hospital right now. I don't know if you guys have ever been six foot three and run into an emergency room, but the first thing they did was point it at my wife and go, did he hurt you? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just shuffling through the doors like men in black, just like, I need sugar water. <laughs> they rush us past everybody in line. They get me in front of some student doctors like I'm an episode of House. It wasn't lupus. <laughs> finally, finally a doctor gets in front of me. And she goes, Mr. Hill, I'm sorry, but your face is paralyzed because you've picked up a rare viral disease called Bell's palsy. And your face is going to be paralyzed for the next six months. And my first thought was, I need to audition for America's Got Talent. <laughs> I've been funny, but like now I have a backstory, and I've never had one of those before. Uh, 
I think if that show's taught us anything, it's that vulnerability isn't a weakness, you know? <laughs> Thinking about what that means, what it means to be a person, what it means to be a parent, what it means to be a man, what it means to have character. When I was a kid, I was just this weird little musical theater nerd. And I remember every man having an opinion on what type of man I was supposed to grow up to be. I remember getting a fight with my stepdad in middle school. He said, I just don't understand you. You don't play sports. You don't go to parties. You have no character. I was like, I have my own makeup kit and know how to tap dance. How many characters do you need? <laughs> 